Hi, right, it's Matt Sparks, and today I got the inline two overhead valve tractor pulling 10 pounds. So I'm sorry the camera's all shaking. Um, I'm doing this all by hand because um, if I use boxes, then the camera angles would not be as good. And I don't have a tripod, so I'm um, sorry about that. So that bothers you, but this is what the uh, problem I'm faced with. So anyways, um, some of the questions I'll be answering at the end of the video because uh, I'm just going to be right about running it. Um, like, how did I hold 26 pounds on that wagon? Because originally I was supposed to hold, I was supposed to pull 20 pounds. But um, this rug is much more coarse than the testing rug that I was using. So um, it's a lot harder to pull the wagon with 20 pounds versus this rug. So I did get to pull 20 pounds on a much more flatter uh, rug. But anyways... Um, 10 pounds is still a uh, pretty good feat to accomplish. But anyways, um, some of the, uh, the questions I'll be answering at the end of the video is how did I hold 26 pounds in that wagon? How did I solve the traction problems that I had faced? And how did I increase torque on this engine to actually pull 10 pounds? So these are all the questions I'll be answering at the end of the video. But for now, let's see it run. So, you got set up. And I'll put it down to for it to run because I need two hands in order to run this thing. Here's a different camera angle that I'll show you. I'll set you down there and then I'll have a more front view camera of how to do it. view um, of it running 
But anyways, um, let's get more and do the questions. So, question number one. How do I get this thing to actually hold 20, 26 pounds? So, I actually got this thing to hold that weight because of the design that I used. Well, two things. First thing is that I have this thing super heavy duty. Um, I have, each wheel has its own um, axle. So you can spin these things independently, um, which means that each wheel has its own bearing block. So you don't have two bearing blocks all the way here and no support in the middle, which is the whole thing just bends in the middle and just really, really is just weak. So having short axles, which are much stiffer than long axles, and then having bearing blocks in the middle really helps. Um, it, though it still does bend, but um, it does help a lot. And the next thing that is kind of mysterious, but I don't know what to really call about it, but for the sake of the video, uh, we'll refer to it as Matt's Law. Now, Matt's Law, as I call it, is that whenever you have like a base plate like here, uh, like this, and you have like a stiff support across here, and you have a bunch of weight on here, the stiff part, the stiff support will stay stiff, but it'll flex a little bit. Now, since it's not evenly distributed and evenly distributed, geez, all the way across here, it will actually separate between the stiff part and the flimsy kind of like the middle uh, base plate. So I actually just break away from the stiff part to the base plate part. So now this part, now this design I came up with is a kind of like a truss system. So as you can imagine, you got like a triangle going on. So you got each triangle going up and down like that, being supported all by itself. And you can stack these trusses all together that actually create a stiffer kind of thing. Now, what's unique about these stiff uh, these trusses is that these will actually distribute out the weight all the way across here and will actually bend and flex to the base plate's needs. So if it's like have the weight like in the middle here, it will distribute all of it throughout this whole base plate. So that's one thing that's good about it. The second thing that's good about it is that if it has like um, really stressed like points in here and if it breaks at one point, instead of like breaking like, um, like a base plate, if it like flexes too much in the middle or something like that, this whole thing will come apart like, like Lego. So just like, just dissolve almost. It'll just like, whoosh, it'll just shatter everywhere. Which sucks for you, but I mean, also, you are not have a brick from base plate. So, uh, kind of some pros and cons about it. But it is, it helps sometimes because um, it will actually act as like a safety system. But you have to assemble it all back together. So, whatever you choose, that's the design that I used. All right, moving on to the second question. How did I get... Uh, well, we'll go and do the how to get traction. So, the traction problem that I faced was the rug, well, the tires are slipping. First, I used dragster tires, which were these tires here. Um, these tires don't really go very well on this rug. It just slip and slides. Now, if you had like a concrete or like a flat, like kitchen floor or something like that, like a smooth, something like that, it will help out a lot but the one thing that really sucks about it is that it'll actually spin inside of the rim so that's a big problem now you can use tape and try to uh solve that but this is much better for rugs the hard surfaces not really great at all um so this of course won't spin inside a rim because it has no rim and it's all brick built as you can see and the reason why this real wheel, uh, sorry, weird lemon shape to it and kind of oval shape instead of this flat part here, instead of this little brick up here, is because I had this issue where it would actually pulse. It'll grip on these grip things, but then it would just slip on this. So it would have this pulsing motion when it's going all the way instead of just having it nice and flat. That's why I, that's why I kind of cut down some of the weights. One of the reasons why. But of course, it didn't pull it in, uh, either way, so that's kind of the issues. 
But um, I have this thing in here, so it actually acts as another like um, tread piece, and it'll actually grip on this flat part. So that is how I solved that with um, these brick whip wheels. These really help a lot. Um, so, and another thing is that I use weights. Now these are filled, of course, with coins. So um, all this adds up to two pounds. I actually measured it out on a scale. So just roughly two pounds that I have on this thing um, holding it down. So that's kind of the extreme measure of weight that I put on this thing to actually get traction. Um, of course, the more is better. It all depends on how strong your uh, axles can uh, handle it. All right, second question. How did I achieve the big gear ratio that I'm about to tell you? This gear ratio is actually 7,680 to 1 gear ratio so i have it from here to here and then here to here so i got small to medium small to medium and all the way across here i got a warm gear which is 24 to 1 and then behind the wheel i got a small gear to a big large wheel a large gear uh, i think it's a 40 tooth gear or something like that but all of that if you multiply it out that is 7680 to 1 gear ratio which is nuts um, as you saw, it was perfect amount of speed. It wasn't like super uh, like snail mode, but it was kind of the perfect kind of speed, I would say, for a tractor. Now, this thing does not look like a tractor at all, but um, I'm just gonna call it that because it pulls weight and um, it kind of looks kind of rugged and like a tractor. I try to put like two front wheels, kind of like skinny together to kind of act like a tractor, but. Um, like I said in the inline tube uh, video, um, it's probably going to look like a chassis on wheels, which this practically is, but um, that's kind of that. So anyways, that's how I got that gear ratio. Now, how did I get the uh, torque from the motor? So this motor does not look torque, uh, period, but I did do some changes. I put a longer valve travel so that more vacuum would go into the cylinder, which would um, have more vacuum to actually suck up the piston. So um, that helps, but also it doesn't increase speed because it actually has to push more valve spring. So then I actually slow it down. So I had more torque because it'll actually pull the piston up farther, but it doesn't have enough, uh, it doesn't increase in speed because of the valve spring. So uh, that's kind of uh, how I got the torque out of that. So, yeah. And I have two medium sized flywheels. Like I said, you can use two medium sized flywheels if you wanted to, but I really would require um, tractor tires. But I didn't use tractor tires because I thought I was going to use them for my back wheels. So, yeah. One of the reasons why that it didn't really turn out very good as a tractor was because of the wheel size comparison to the actual tractor looking. Because you imagine you usually have like a humongous wheel on this thing compared to this big engine and stuff like that. So, But this is kind of the size I have because if we have bigger wheels, then um, the axle will actually bend more and will um, kind of break. Now, what's really weird about this is that if it pulls too much weight, then the wheels will actually pull inward and they will actually like twist the axles and it will just force the wheel outwards. And when that happens, it like wreaks havoc because this thing is so top heavy, it will just fall over, just flop over like a like a fat man in water. So um, that's kind of what happens. It just like completely just falls over. And when that happens, it can crack the head. So that's why I have these support beams here. And also, if you don't have it pushing down on this thing, it will actually crack the head in half because the spring rate will actually be too much. And the supports are, of course, kind of weak. So it will actually just break on the top there. So that's why I have these supports on there. It looks really ugly, but that's kind of a practical reason why I have on there. But um, because A, it doesn't crack the head and B, it doesn't crack the head when running. So that's kind of the reason why I have that in there. But also, what really, what really sucks is this. So this has weights in it, or money, I guess you can call it. 
but um, whenever it flops over, it cracks it. So, like that. So it'll just, you know, just spill everything out. And of course, I have these things all organized in like rows and stuff like that, and try to get the most um, money as I can into that as possible. And I have to reorganize them. And I cannot count you. I cannot um, count on one hand of how many times I've had to reorganize these stupid friggin' um, weights that sucks so bad. That's why I'm like really wanting to get these uh, this video done. And I've tried it so many times. So, anyways, um, that was my uh, tractor video. If you liked it, hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more of this, hit the subscribe button because. I make a lot of unique things. So, anyways, cheers.